you love, we love you. You are the best thing that ever happened to us. Lord, since we started with you, it's been a win-win. Yes, and the beautiful thing is that you found us. We didn't find you. What is it that we had? Enjoying sin that would have made us come to you. Lord, we just want to say thank you for being our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our Redeemer. Yes, thank you for being our Deliverer. Thank, thank you for being our Healer. Thank you for being our all in all. Jesus, you are the best thing that happened to us. Yes, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. And Father, thank you for giving us Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving us the most expensive thing you have. Hallelujah. Thank you. And it's because you love us. Yes, God. If you loved us less, you wouldn't have given us Jesus. Yes. It's because as, as Jesus is, so are we in you with you. Hallelujah. You love us as much as you love Jesus. Yes, Baba. We bless you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for Thank you for everything. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for yes, everything. Yes, we thank you there's no mistake with you. Yes, that we Lord. find ourselves at this time in this in history is because it's your plan. But I shall Father, thank you. Glory be to your name forevermore. Oh, thank you for Freedom House. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Thank Daddy. you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name yes, we worship. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Last week we talked about looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, and one of the things we mentioned, so this will be the part two of it, praise the Lord. And one of the things we mentioned, I think our text is uh, Romans 1, 2, 1, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And then we talked about, I think it's Hebrews 12, 2, can you put up your Hebrews 12? I just want to do a recap for those who are not here, then we'll move on. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 12, 2, it says, um, Hebrews 12, 2, it says, um, okay. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is our all in all. Yes. He's the author. It's the faith of Jesus inside of us that we even have faith. Praise the Lord. And he's the perfecter of that faith. So you can't say, oh, my faith. I, I, I just want to mention this because sometimes when we're going through hard situations, one of the things the enemy can tell you is that you don't have faith. This one, you know, you can't. But you're not the one that perfects your faith. The author, Jesus, is the beginning and the perfecter of that faith. Praise the Lord. I hope you know that inside of faith is already faith. Praise God. So, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him? Jesus had knew where he was going. He knew what would be the result of his sacrifice. The Bible says he despised the shame. Is that despising? He despised the shame. So, and we talked about last week that until you despise the hardship, the situation facing you. If you magnify it, it will override God. It will become bigger than God. But if you despise it or you do esteem it, it will become smaller and smaller. And it places you in a place where, as God becomes bigger in that situation, you are able to key into God and understand what you're supposed to do. Praise the Lord. And that is the way of victory in any situation. But in any situation that that situation becomes bigger than God, you won't have faith. And now, Jesus, how did Jesus do it? And how are we to do it? And we took the story of Abraham. That Abraham did not consider his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. But he kept on. The Bible said, giving glory to God. Being fully persuaded that what God promised he was able to do. He kept on giving glory to God. And God did what he promised Abraham. Praise the Lord. So, why are we sharing this? Because the Bible says in the world you have tribulations. There are situations, our life is in seasons. There's a season of, oh, now that the battle is over, we are more than conquerors. But sometimes you're just beginning, after the battle is over, and you have a rest, another one is going somewhere. That is the fact of life. Now, what God is teaching us, what he's teaching us, is that we ride the storm. We ride the storm. If whatever the enemy throws our way doesn't shake us in any way, then you're living a victorious life. But if every time the enemy rattles you, you lose your peace, you are running out of skeleton, then you don't know how to live yet. If this is our right for the rest of our life, it's not better to learn how to ride it. Ride it properly. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, that the esteem. Now, how can I de esteem my situation so it doesn't override everything? One of the things I want to mention, and that is the way Satan works. Satan can only try and keep us in the mental realm in every situation. Remember when we were talking this morning, we said that the battle is in the mind. And that battle in the mind is to keep us in the mental realm. 
How am I going to solve this situation? What if this happens? What is going to happen? Oh, you think five years ahead. You worry. You sleepless sleeplessness. As long as you're in that realm, you are in the mental realm. And unfortunately, you can never win in that realm. What are we to do? We move into another realm that is higher. And that is the realm of the fourth dimension. That is the realm of the spirit. That's why we are talking about the spirit this morning. When you move into that realm, you're riding. You're riding the storm. Praise the Lord. Thank so, you. the pressure on our mind is done tactically by the enemy. If I send all these thoughts, worrying thoughts, how are you going to do? This will happen if this doesn't happen. Blah, blah, blah. And you spend your time on it. The enemy knows you can never. It's difficult to switch into the spirit. So you keep you with more thoughts. Praise the Lord. The thinking, the thought projections are an attack on themselves. It's an attack of the enemy. Praise God. So now, what we want to talk now, how do I now, what are the things? So number one is to, what do I do to come out of that mental realm? To come out of the mental realm. I'm still here. I'm trying to connect to the spirit, but it's not happening yet. My mind is too much on this thing. This thing is facing me here. I can feel it. I can touch it. I can taste it. If it's illness, the pain is too much. The pain is a constant factor. I'm feeling the pain. What do I do? To switch, to come out of that realm. Praise the Lord. That's what we want to talk about today. And to do it before I go into the details, we are going to read 2 Chronicles 20. 2 Chronicles 20. First, we are going to read 12 to 13. Start from 12. Be taking it as I, uh, you are going to help me. 12 says, uh, It says, Oh, our God. We do not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee, and all Judah stood before the Lord, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Stop there. Trouble came upon Jehoshaphat, and I keep saying it. That's how sometimes they need to work with us. He doesn't tell us I'm coming on so so date. Suddenly there's a knock on the door, okay? So he came upon Jehoshaphat. Naturally, Jehoshaphat feared. But thank God for him. And that's what we are going to learn here. When he's looking at you in the face, what do you do? The first thing Jehoshaphat did is that he set himself to seek the Lord. Everybody. Why is seeking the Lord important? Because you want something that will mortify the flesh. The hold of that situation upon your flesh, upon the mental realm, upon what you've seen. I've said it here. There are times I've been faced with impossible situations. The first thing God told me, I knew that there's no way. And please, that's why as a Christian, you need to learn the skills of your warfare. A Christian cannot say, I can't do this, I can't do this. With the Holy Spirit, there's nothing as a brother's spirit. There's nothing that you cannot do. The first thing to do is set your face to seek the Lord. Because you need to minimize that situation. And you need to magnify God in that situation. No matter how impossible your situation is looking. And what is the first step? They fasted. Fasting doesn't move God. Fasting moves you. What does fasting? It mortifies your the, the, this voice of the flesh. You know that? What is the voice shout the flesh shouting? Impossible. It can't be done. You are finished in this situation. Wait for the outcome. It's totally over. That's what your flesh is shouting. So, by waiting, by seeking the Lord, what do you do? You are now mortifying or deadening because you can't even hear when the voice of the flesh is so loud it's louder than the words you know it's louder than the word of god please my brethren however you will fast the beautiful thing about fasting is that god is such a loving father he doesn't tell us as we used to do in religious circles was be six to six god knows everybody's ability god knows it's the hard situation the hard I don't like a good thing. You know that my, my heart, I want to seek the Lord. Whatever you are doing in that seeking, God appreciates it. Because he's saying now, yeah, there now, this my daughter is. There are your ready. Do you understand? Because you, the voice of the Lord is heard in stillness. In stillness. As long as we're busy, you can't hear God. It's difficult. Remember when Elijah went to the mountain? He said, like God sent him to the mountain. The voice of the Lord was not in the there was a thunder, there was a, a very big noise. No, the voice of the Lord was not in neither of 
them. And then after all that ranking, voicing, everything, the Bible says that it was a then it says that it was a still small voice. Quiet and then still small voice. The reason why you need to fast is that you need to quiet all the voices. There are voices. Voices of your past failure, voices of your experience, voices of how impossible that situation is. You need to quiet that, those voices. And you can't quiet them in a loud, you know, in that loud, the, everything is speaking. You have to quiet them in a still, in a place where you will hear the still, small voice. That's how God, God doesn't shout, God doesn't strain to the head. You have to make yourself ready so that you can pick what he's saying. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. Praise the Lord. Now, setting yourself aside, we have said about the voice might not be on minimizing the voice of your flesh so that you can hear God. That's the first step. Now, we are talking about the esteeming your situation. This is part of the process. Because when you have fasted, then somehow, somehow, that situation doesn't look impossible anymore. What has changed is you have changed. Not the situation, not God. God is already, always ready to answer us. Always ready to hear us when we cry. Praise the Lord. So, I've been faced with impossible situation. Impossible, impossible. I remember the first thing that happened when I did. After, because there are some situations that we will eat. I don't know if you've been there. Some people, in bad situations, they eat more. Me, appetite lock up. Everybody is different how they handle stuff. My appetite will just lock up. I don't even feel like it. I said, okay, the best thing is to do the Holy Spirit led me to a fast. After the three days of fasting, I noticed that in that fast, I now believe that God is intervening. But I noticed that after the fast, three days later, the worry came back. I said, no, 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 no. Something is dead, the flesh is not dead yet. God help me. I'm not telling you that's the way, I'm just giving you an example. I now did another seven days. I said, okay, so you're still dead. You're still disturbing me. I did. By the help of the Holy Spirit, not in my strength. After it, I heard God. That situation became a, it's impossible. But then, God. God. Praise the Lord. God, this God. There is no wall of Jericho that cannot come down. When the enemy does not factor in, in trying to bring that impossible situation in your life is the anointing factor. Once the anointing kicks in, it has no hold over you anymore. Praise the Lord. So when you are waiting and you wait and you hear God, when you hear God in your situation, ah, you know and you know it's over. You know and you know that there's no impossibility anymore. Praise the Lord. And then, unfortunately, because some situations do not last for six months, it could be not standing. So you have heard God, and you have confidence. But along the line, you notice that something is happening. I'm getting worried about this situation again. Because the person we're dealing with is a master class man. He's making us. Do you understand me? He may decide again to bring certain pressures along your way. He may decide again to make you, do you understand? You are in the flesh, unfortunately. What I mean by we are in the flesh, we still have the flesh nature as part of our pack package. Anytime it's like that, don't wait. Two things you do, and this is what the HFI did. First of all, he set himself to seek the Lord. This is a treacherous situation that even the children control. All of them were standing. They said they stood with their young ones. Everybody. You can't say, oh, my child will die by 12 o'clock if he doesn't eat. This one, everybody, because they were facing a immediate extermination. This one is like, if God doesn't intervene, those children will also die. Did God not intervene or not? God did. What again did they do? The Bible says in that place, it says they stood before the Lord. Stood before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now go to go to the next verse. And how did you have stood before the Lord? Yes. Then upon their hands here. Yes, before the Lord, with the little one said the next one. Read that next one. Then upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the mm -hmm. son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the mm -hmm. son of Mataniah, mm -hmm. a Levite of the sons of Asaph, mm -hmm. came, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hacking ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and thou King Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. this said the Lord unto thee, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Was God still? Is the waiting that made them hear the voice of the Lord? Do we see the order? They waited and then they heard. Okay? They waited and they heard God. So if they had not waited, what could have happened? It's not just this king. The Bible is full of examples. Asa, when he was confronted, the first time he was confronted, he saw the Lord. The Lord told him what to do. And the Lord delivered him from the Ethiopians and the Lugans. The next time that trouble came, instead of seeking the Lord, he decided to go to Damascus and tell the king to come and break his league with the king of uh, Israel. Was God pleased or not? He was successful, but God was not pleased. And that path led to his downfall because the path of not seeking God is the issue here. The Bible recorded that even when he was not deceased, he did not still seek God. And then he died. Are you seeking God? That's the question today. In that situation, are you making seeking God? A, that is like, this is my life. Are you seeking God? Praise the Lord. That's the question. So, because the day you are self-reliant, I can do this myself. I'm okay now. You're already on your way out. That is the truth. Praise the Lord. So, so this is what? Because they, they saw the Lord, God caused them to hear. Now, the next thing they did, when they did say, by this, the battle is not yours, but God. When God says, I'm taking over the battle, you will go to sleep. You go to sleep. Because you're not the one that says, I'm taking over the battle. Go to the next one. Tomorrow, they got a strategy. Some of us are going around the same circle. Two, four, seven. Yes. Can God not release a strategy to you? How to overcome? Do we get the point? God will release every strategy. Amen. Amen. Every strategy. Amen. It's because we are not seeking. That's why you have no head. Praise the Lord. He will release the strategy. So God told them, for this one, just go up. God told them even where the enemy will be. He says, tomorrow go in them against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus. God told them where they are coming. You know the route they will take. He said, God is this God. I don't know if you will. See, God told Peter, go to this house address. The number, who lives in the address. The name of the person is to look for. Don't you think the Holy Spirit can be detailed enough for your situation? To tell you everything you need to know about that situation. What you need to do in that situation. He said, go to this part. They are coming up by this way. Because God knows everything. They are coming up. He says, come up by this And you shall find them at the end of the group. Before the wilderness of Jeruel. You know this is where you are going to find them. Praise the Lord. Go to the next one. Read it, brother. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand here still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Praise the Lord. You will not need to fight. So, no need to come and start. Because if God had told them, you will fight this way. There are many examples in the Bible where God says, set ambushment at the back. Send some people at fellas in the front. God is the master strategist. Your situation is not impossible for him. Mm. He knows how to do it. And he will do it for you today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. He is the master strategist. There are not two times in your life that God will solve the problem the same way. Why is he proving to you? To say, I am the God of... You know, like, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Neither are your ways are my ways. As far as the heaven is high above the earth. So far are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Am I my... You know, God is just God. You are not. We are not. Praise the Lord. So, he says, see, see, fear not be this way for tomorrow. Go out against them. He has already told them where they will be. So, go towards them. I will be with you. Praise the Lord. Move to the next story. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Everything is worship. What I want to bring down, because we go to the end, everything, step of the way. The fasting tell itself is in worship. The fasting, setting yourself apart from God, is worship. I hope you know your lifestyle is a worship. So the fast itself is worship. Every step of the way, worship. When they stood before the Lord, standing before the Lord, they quite be still and know that I am God. It's worship. Then when God has spoken, they worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see the mindset that will bring us out of every, no matter how impossible that situation. 
By the time you're worshiping, God begins to flex muscles. Yeah, this my daughter knows what I can do. Yes, I'm coming. I will show them. Yes, after a while, you say, step aside. Let me show them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know how when you have a big brother in school, I in school that are bullies, and the big brother will come and stand by you, just by you. And those bullies will just stand, just melt away because the big brother has come. Praise the Lord. So, the, the, a person that went to where they put elephants, you know, they, these uh, conservatives for elephants, you know, in the safari, they said, the baby elephant will just be doing stuff, you know, like, why are they playing and all? So, the mother elephant will just do as if he's, he's minding her business. Then you come, the you know, visitors now, because the baby elephant is too baby, they will come by the distance. What's this? Any threat? On that baby elephant. The mother, the, she doesn't do anything, just stand by the side of the elephant. It's like, touch my, touch her, touch my child. That's how God is with us. Praise the Lord. Then we have, we need to recognize that we have God. If we don't put him here, if we don't magnify him against our bigger than our situations, unfortunately, it's not going to. With those you're worried, you are tying his hands. All the worries tie his hands. Praise the Lord. Because with the worry, as we talk, we are esteeming the situation above God. Remember, worry has to do with what am I going to do? What am I going to say? What am I? Do we understand? So it is I above God. How am I going to pay this school fees? It is I above God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So you see, sir, so you have to praise the Lord. With a loud voice. They started praising. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. Before we go on, I want to tell you what, in that situation that looks impossible, what praise does for you? Number one. It's called the praise cure. When you begin to praise, if you've been in the mental realm for too long, for example, you know, the mental realm of this situation is just in my face. How do I esteem the situation? As you begin to pray sometimes, it will sound dry. You are not connecting in your spirit. But just keep at it. It just shows the level of the problem, the embeddedness of the problem, or the strongholds that are there. Do you understand me? Don't be discouraged. Keep praising. After a while of praising, something will happen. You begin to praise from your spirit. You know when you know you can praise, you can praise with your mouth, but your heart is not really engaged. Which happens with most of you know, so like when you begin to praise, even in your quiet time, that time you're praising, you know that you have not entered the realm. Okay? But when you now, there's a level you do, then you enter the realm. That's when you connect. You're praising now from your spirit. You hear, God will speak. God will speak. Once you're in that realm, God will speak. So, how long do I go to enter that? As long as it takes. In that situation, as long as it takes. If the enemy will tell you that you're just crazy, it doesn't matter because he's afraid of praise. Okay, so when you are doing that, whether you're doing it as a sacrifice or it's still here, number one, the enemy does not stay in that atmosphere. You know why? He hates, he wants adoration. The enemy is, he craves worship. So in that situation, even though it's not still flowing from my mouth, but with my mouth, I'm praising God, I'm telling you, you're bigger than the biggest, you're stronger than the strongest. What am I doing? I am minimizing the hold of the enemy in that situation. And he cannot stay. He can't stay where praise is happening. It will start pushing further away, further away, further away, further. because in presence, in God's presence, no other presence. Do you understand me? So even you intentionally, by doing this, the enemy is losing. He can't be comfortable in that situation. Even normal worship songs, and you're not pray, singing along with the worship, it's still better. Because the enemy cannot stay where we praise, because he wants to receive it. Do you know that we praise him in advantage? When you are magnifying the situation, when you're telling everybody what he has done, you're telling everybody what he's doing now, he's receiving worship. He will never receive worship from your mouth anymore in Jesus' name. That's why sometimes you sit your mouth. You can sit in the hand of the person doing whatever, but you don't keep, you know, like magnifying him, telling him how wonderful. Do you know when you are not telling your friends, hey, and they say, huh? Who are they shouting for? Do you know me? He's receiving worship. When you acknowledge him every time, he's receiving worship. Who are you to acknowledge? God. 
The Bible says, acknowledge God in all your ways. Even when you know, all you, the most you can say to acknowledge is, I'm a liar. Tell him about his dark fall in that situation. Do you understand? That acknowledgement he needs. You are already defeated. I am first of defeat. Get out. You are, he's still shooking you and you are still saying get out. You are defeated. He's still shooking you. He's still there face to face. Do you understand me? That is the way to talk with the enemy. You must use your words. Be bold. See, it's bold. It may be quick inside. I, I told you a story here. It's Kenny Hagin. The enemy came, you know, like in full manifestation sometimes, everywhere standing up. And he began to speak. He began to speak. You know, like, yeah, you know, the enemy said, yeah, I can feel your hands are shaking. He said, my hands are shaking, but my spirit is not shaking. He said, I can feel, see your hand, your hand is shaking. You know, like when a frightful situation, I can see your hand is shaking. He said, my hand may be shaking, but my spirit is standing. I'm not shaking in my spirit. Because your flesh is not you. You are the real you, it's your spirit. And that spirit is linked with Jesus. The same as Jesus. Praise the Lord. So you, what I'm trying to say, you can be confessing this thing and the boldness. See, remember when we said that when we put on the armor, the armor, the full armor of, of God, you're covered. You're speaking God's word. In that armor, where you're covered and you're speaking God's word, the enemy does not know who is inside you. He will not take a chance. He doesn't know who is inside that armor. He's inside, you know, everything covered. Remember the full cladding, helmet of salvation, and you're speaking God's word. He has, he will not take a chance. But when you're speaking, even with your armor, and you're speaking, um, ah, this situation will kill me. I'm finished. He said, no, 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 that's not God. Let's come in, let's come in. That's not God. I can know, I know, I know who is inside. It's not God. May you not betray your identity in Jesus' name. Your identity is God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyway, so, as they did, they did the praise. Keep praising. Hallelujah. Before, after, before, after, before, after your breakthrough, you keep doing what? Praising. And praise is not something you say. Keep saying hallelujah. Hallelujah to you most time. Hallelujah as I mentioned the voice. Lord, I, I praise you. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is hallelujah? Hail the strong one. Hail the strong one. That's the meaning of hallelujah. Just keep saying it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Father. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father. I glorify your name. And then when you have time, you spend time and you dance before his presence. And you thank you, Father. See, celebration. Let me read this part. He said, um, celebration is a manifestation of your expectation. Celebration. When they shouted before the world of Jericho, mm. the shouting side is the winning side. Is that not so? Mm. So that shout is also worship. It's a sign of your expectation. So if you keep quiet, you're not expecting. So anyway, with these people, what did God do? So with praise. Finally, he says, with a loud voice on heart. Now go to the next one. And they rose early in the morning. Why did you go early in the morning? They expected. They expected a miracle. That's why they rose early in the morning. They couldn't even sleep. They were full of expectation. Are you full of expectation in your miracle? How do I show expectation? Are you dancing before God in expectation? Are you praising Him in expectation? Are you telling Him, Father, you did it for so 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 in the Bible? You did it for maybe you've heard about another testimony that like, Father, you did it for that person. You're not a respecter of person. I thank you. No matter what you feel, no matter how much is paining, praise the Lord. So, then he says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. So what I want to mention here is that number one, they decided. God didn't tell them. God had released the word that this will happen, isn't it? By themselves, they decided. After the source of Levites had praised God as God released the word. The next morning, as they were going, Jehoshaphat stood up and encouraged them. And then they decided to call a choir to go before the army. Remember, you know, we're reading some of these stories after we know the end result. These people do not know how it's going to end. That is the issue of our faith. You don't know what is going to happen. God may not reveal to them, this is how I'm going to do it. It's, do you understand it? But you have to trust God. You have to trust Him in the process of bringing you out. All you need, and most times God will not tell you the end result. One step at a time. A step at a time. All you may hear is, do this. You take that step. He will not tell you uh, in five years, or in two years, or
or this, 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 this is what is going to happen. Where is the faith now? Because faith has to do with your Lord. Trusting God, you don't know what the future holds. It's to trust God. That's what faith is all about. Praise the Lord. Step by step, you take the step. So anyway, these people, as they were doing, all they know is because God has spoken, they're expecting a miracle, and they know the power of praise. They set up choir to praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. They say, praising the Lord in the beauty, you know, um, for the Lord is good, for his mercies endure forever. That is their own, that is their own uh, praise. For the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, and the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, and his mercy is enduring forever. As they begin to sing and make praise. That will not permit me, but that you can read the story too. As they begin to sing and make praise. Remember God said the battle is mine. God set ambitions. God didn't tell them how the battle will be fought. But that's God's level. Your own is to trust. Your own is to believe. Your own is to speak. Your own is to celebrate. Your own is to praise Him. He sent ambushments. And they began to fight each other. At the end of that trouble, what happened? This thing. Three days in carrying this boy. Is that not the restoration that God told us here in this church? Three days in, for every trouble. Hey, by the time God finished with the enemy, hey, 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 you are in such a place. You are rewarded for standing your ground. You are rewarded for overcoming. You are rewarded and it's always done. It's never three days in carrying this point. But if you read that story, they praise God again as they were going back. They praise God as they were carrying this point. They praise God as they were going back. So what is the common denominator here? Praise, worship. Praise, worship. Are you doing that in your situation? Or are you thinking? I last time. Sunday we mentioned that if the doctor had told us, oh, this is it. Sorry, I know the doctors are obliged by law to tell you as it is. So sometimes they're not, they don't sugar, sugar coat their prognosis. They say, oh, this one, five, years, uh, five months or whatever. See, the difference that that thing makes is who you esteem more. If you esteem the word of God more, by instructions I'm here, hmm, it means nothing. With time, because you're still the word of God more, that situation will not kill you. God will show you what to do. God will begin to walk and you'll come out of that situation. But if you esteem the word of the doctor more than God, you go, you start preparing for your burial. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. Shall we stand up?